Well, my presser feet kit for my sewing machine just came in. I'm excited about it because it's got all kinds of different feet in here for doing different things. So we're going to take a look at each one of these feet and then I'm also going to demonstrate how to use each one of these feet and what they're good for. This is all the feet that comes in it. There's probably a glare, so let's get the plastic off. You can kind of see this has 52 different feet in it. From the sound of it, it might be a mess when I open it up. Let's see. Oops. Um, yeah, it's a little messy. <laughs> These do look like decent cases, although next time I would suggest I'm probably going to get a piece of foam after I get them organized and cut out a piece of foam just to sit on top to keep it from doing this <laughs> in the future. So since it's kind of messy, I'm going to shut the camera off and get a grip on what is in here and then I'll be right back. Because several of these feet have basically the same exact function, they might just be a different style or size, I laid them out according to their function. So when I go over them, I will just choose one out of that group to display. The first foot that's listed in the book is this one. It's called a stitch guide foot. It's just basically a basic universal foot that has this guide along it so that you can easily tell how wide your stitches need to be. Well, not your stitches, but your hem or your seam allowance. Each one of these marks is two millimeters. So you just calculate how wide it needs to be and then you can keep it right on that line as you sew. These next feet listed are pretty much just a universal all-purpose foot. It has a wide space here so that you can do straight stitching or zigzagging stitch. It has the opening and then it comes in in the middle to help hold the fabric down as it passes through. This one is also a universal but it's an open-toed foot. It just allows you to have more visibility in your stitches, especially if you have fabrics that that obey as you're sewing them. And you can have that, that leeway of having that openness there. It's also good for applications. So if you're doing any appliques, that wide opening helps you see really well where you're going. And this is just another universal one. It's kind of a combination of the last two. It has the support for the middle, but then it has the clear opening. So it's kind of, so you can see where your stitches are going to be falling here, since it's open and clear. These next sets right here are all zipper feet. Just a standard zipper foot. This is where you can switch from one side to the next on your machine. This 
so that you can have the needle going down on either side and it's raised for the zipper to pass through on either side as you're sewing. You have that space. This is the same thing, but it's a narrow. So instead of having that extra space, you've got a little tiny one here, but for larger zippers, oh, there's a net in here. For larger zippers, you can use this narrow foot. And then this is the same thing, but instead of it being a snap-on, you actually have to use your screwdriver to undo that nut and replace the whole foot. This set is also this set is also zipper feet, but these are for invisible zippers. Because of the way that invisible zippers get sewn, it's much easier with special feet. They have these channels underneath the bottom that help guide the zipper. And it's a single hole in the center, so it holds it very stable as you're sewing it. It's the same thing, but this is a metal one. You've got your single hole in the center, and on the bottom, you have the grooves for the zipper to lay into as you're sewing it. And again, this is basically the same thing. It's an invisible zipper foot. And it's just got a guide in the front and your grooves in the bottom for the zipper to fall into. This one is called a nail button pressure foot. The purpose of this one is to hold buttons in place as you sew them to make it easier. Because a lot of times when I sew buttons, if I use the sewing machine, most of the time I hand sew them, but if I use a sewing machine, buttons have a tendency to slide under your pressure feet and then when the needle goes down of course then you pop a needle because it hits the button instead of going through the holes. So this helps hold the buttons in place. This one's called an applique foot. It has a wide open stitch or a wide zigzag stitch and it also supports the fabric in the front. That allows you to be able to do embroidery and appliques and cut work more easily. It's also plastic and see-through so that you can easily see where you need to, where your stitches need to go. These are round bead feet. They have a large groove underneath to accommodate beads like strings of pearls and different kinds of beads or sequins, two different sizes. This one is just a basic pressure foot. The only difference with this one is that it has this little guide right here so that your fabric can just bump up along that as it's feeding in so it stays straight. This one is for satin stitch so you'd be doing a lot of zigzag stitching on here but it's also has this groove on the bottom so that it allows for the thickness of the thread so it doesn't just press it down. That would be good for like embroidery thread and those shiny threads. Standard threads would be fine too. This 
This next group, they're basically all the same thing with just a, one or two little differences. There's two that are six millimeter and two that are three millimeters. This is for rolled hems or narrow hems. It takes the fabric in here and rolls it and rolls it as it feeds through where the needle comes down. On the underside there's a groove that allows that rolled hem to either stay plumped up or flattened out. So that's basically the only difference between these. So if you want it to have it you if you want it to have dimension, use this one. If you want it to be flat, then you just use this one. This one is called a zigzag foot. To me, it's basically a universal foot. And if you look at the one that they call universal, yeah, they pretty much are the same thing. This one's just made out of plastic. So I'm going to put this one in the same category as this. This one, they say, is an embroidery foot. Well, it looks a lot like the open toe foot, except it's plastic. So I will put this one in with this category. And then this one is called the large opening pressure foot, which is basically the same as those others. So I'm putting those that with those. The next ones are cording foots. Focus, there you go. This cording foot has a little spring tension on the front. It holds three cords at a time that would go into this and then down through the bottom, which has the grooves on it. That holds the cords straight in place while you're applying them to the fabric. Then there's also this one, it's called a five hole cording foot. In this case, you have to feed them down through these little holes and out the bottom. You can see that they're, they don't take as large of a cord, it's gonna be smaller. And then it has just a gap here or a little groove for them to come out in. They don't get guided as well as the three hold one. And then the seven hole cording foot is basically the same way. You put them down through these little holes and then underneath and then they're not guided individually. There's just a groove for them for the the raised part to go through. This one right here is called a quilting foot. For anybody who does quilting, you know that you have these little narrow seam allowances, usually either a quarter or one eighth. This helps guide those seam allowances. It only allows for a straight stitch. It has a single hole, it's not wide. And there's no groove on the bottom. This foot is called the braiding foot. It's similar to a cording foot, except it's for larger, larger things than cords. You can put ribbon or lace or elastic, and you feed it down through that hole, and that helps keep it straight and aligned as you're attaching it to your fabric. It does have the groove on the bottom, for the uh, height of it. Mm. 
This one right here is just basically a pressure foot for straight stitches. And the way you can tell is it just has the hole in the center. So you can't do zigzags with this. This one right here is another quilting foot. It's got a quarter inch seam allowance guide on it. It's also only for straight stitches. And there's no groove, groove in the bottom. So I'm going to put this with the other quilting. This next group are overcast or whip stitches. The neat thing about these, well it has the guide, is this little arm in the middle. That allows it not to tug on the edge of the fabric. So you can almost get a serger edge style of stitch with this because of that little arm protecting it. It does not have a groove. This is the same thing. It's got that little arm right there to protect the edge of the garment or the edge of the seam allowance to keep the thread from pulling it into pulling into it so you get more of a surged edge look. This one I honestly don't think I'd ever use. <clears throat> it's saying that this is the same thing but without the gear. I really don't know what the purpose of that would be. I mean, you have this guide here, but because you do not have that protective arm, unless you've got a very light tension, you can't really use this the same as you would use these others unless it was a heavier duty fabric. I mean, maybe if you were like sewing the edge of some kind of leather or canvas, then this would be fine. This would not work on a very lightweight fabric, only for heavy duty fabric. This foot is called an edge joiner. It has this guide in the middle. You can see it. Where you can bump up on either side of it the fabric. Or you can have fabric on one side and lace on the other side. And then do like a decorative stitch across the two. You can also use this uh, for a gap, let it have a gap in the middle, a slight gap, so that you can do like heirloom stitching or special decorative stitches. This one is the double welting foot. The purpose of this is for making welting or cording for around pillows and couch cushions or any other type of item that you want to have that that cording effect around the seam. It gives the grooves. This is a lot larger than the cording foot which only allows it for a very small cord. This allows for a lot larger passing but it is a straight stitch. This next foot is kind of neat. It's called the fringe foot. And what's different about this one is this very large bar in the middle. Well, not large, but tall. And as you do a zigzag stitch over this, it allows for a raised texture or fringe. You can also do um, joining uh, different fabrics together with a gap and do like heirloom stitching. So that's for a fun stitch. This next item is not a foot, but it is something that is used to put the snap feet on your machines. For those who have machines, I'm going to mat down here. Anyway, for those who have machines that you have to take the screw off for every foot, these are really handy. You just put this on there and then all of these feet will just snap up in here. And you can see how it works. I'm going to push that. It unlocks them. 
my machine already has this on it so what I have decided to do with this I just recently got a foot that does not fit on my machine it's called a flat felt foot which is really kind of cool except that this distance right here won't fit on this it's too skinny so what I'm going to do since I have this extra one is I'm going to very lightly shave down the sides right here so that it will fit on this foot so that I can actually use this foot so I guess while I'm showing you now this flat fill foot does not come in this kit this is one that I purchased separately I just have not been able to use it yet this foot is an adjustable bias tape foot it's for feeding the bias in and guiding it as the fabric as it wraps around the fabric and this one can be adjusted to different widths this is a shearing or gathering foot it only does a light gathering if you want something that's fuller then you should try a ruffler it does allow for zigzagging or straight stitch this is a roller foot I probably won't use this much because I have a walking foot which kind of does the same thing but has a mechanism and this just has a roller what it does is allow the top fabric to move along at the same pace as the under fabric when you have certain fabrics they have a tendency to want to move at different rates so this helps guide it guide them a little bit together and it's got rollers on the front and on the back this is a, just another quilting foot that allows for a narrow seam allowance guide and again it only is for straight stitches so I'm going to put this with the other quilting feet this is a buttonhole foot my machine came with one so I probably will not be using this one I'm used to the one that came with my machine and I will demonstrate that one uh, this one looks a little different than mine mine has a tab on it that when it hits that tab it automatically changes direction this one doesn't look like it does that these are both blonde stitch feet and I will show how to use that this one is called a knit foot and anybody who's tried to sew knits or stretchables knows it's not always the easiest thing to sew so this is designed to work with your needle bar this touches the needle bar so that as your needle comes up it raises the foot to allow the fabric to move but then when your needle goes down it has this little spongy part right here that grabs the fabric and keeps it from moving while the needle goes into it so I have not used one of these feet before it'll be interesting to see if it actually works both of these are called pin tuck feet there's a seven and a nine to help guide for making pin tucks with pin tucks you would use a double needle instead of a single needle it has the grooves so that you can keep those tucks in a very straight line
These four are all for darning, quilting, embroidering, or basically free form. They're designed to work with the needle arm so that as the needle goes up and down, it releases the fabric so that it can be moved in any direction. It's just four different styles. Like the only difference between this one and this one is one is closed and one is opened. These are also designed for either low shank or high shank, so you have to pick the one that will fit with your machine. And this item is a needle threader for threading the needle on the machine. This is the end of part one for this kit. In part two, I will demonstrate how to use these. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like these videos. Thank you.